So in this question, an athlete with a mass of 70 kilograms, the mass of the athlete is 70 kg, trains by performing press ups. So these are the press ups he's performing, as you can see in the picture, with a load on his back. So he put some load on his back and he is doing up press ups. The diagram shows a perpendicular distance involved. So diagram is representing the perpendicular distance. The center of the mass of athlete is CM. So this is the center of the mass of athlete means the point where uh, the gravitation, he's feeling the gravitational force of the earth or pull of the earth. And center of the mass of the load, that is CL. So it means this is a position where the load is experiencing the force of gravity. The mass of the load is 6 kilograms. In the question, they're saying, what is the upward force exerted by his two arms? So we need the upward force exerted by his two arms. So now I will represent the forces. So there's a first thing, there's an upward force of the arm. I will use another color so that it will be visible. So this is the upward force of the arms. Then the weight of the load is acting downward because weight is always acting downward. So the weight is acting downward and what will be the value of the weight because they mentioned the mass of the load is 6 kilogram. That's a mass. So how we can get the weight as we know weight is equals to mass multiplied by gravity. So mass is equals to 6 and the gravity is 10. So 6 multiplied by 10. So the weight will be equal to 60 Newton. So there will be a 60 Newton force downward because of the load and the weight of the athlete as they mentioned the mass of the athlete is 70 kilogram so if the mass of athlete is 70 kilogram the weight will be equal to 70 multiplied by 10 which is equals to 700 newton so weight of the athlete will be 700 newton the weight of the load is 60 newton and there's an upward force by the arms that we don't know and that is what we have to find. Now, what is the pivot here? Pivot, a point around which the object can rotate. So this athlete, as he is doing the press ups, so he can move down or up. So what is the point of the rotation around which point he is rotating around his feet? He is rotating. So this is the point of rotation or this will be the pivot. Is it clear first thing the forces, the direction of the forces, then we'll solve the question. But first thing you should identify the point of rotation, a pivot. Then you should uh, show the arrows to represent the direction of the forces. The weight is always acting downward. That's why both weights, weight of the load and weight of the athlete is acting downward. And as they mentioned, the upward force from the arm. So the arms are applying an upward force. So that is pointing up. Now what happened? Because of the load, because of the weight of the athlete, which direction he will tend to rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise? Because of his own weight, which direction he tend to rotate? Is it a clockwise or anti-clockwise? So there is a weight of the athlete. This is a pivot. With the, as he moved downward, which direction this showing a rotation? Clockwise or anti-clockwise? So this is anti-clockwise. So this is anti-clockwise rotation. That's right. What about the weight of the athlete and the load as well? So weight and load both are causing an anti-clockwise rotation. Because of the weight, he tend to move anti-clockwise. Because of the load, he tend to move anti-clockwise. And as he try to apply an upward force, so because of the upward force, which direction he tend to rotate? He tend to rotate clockwise. So 
the two weights are causing an anti clockwise rotation because of the two weights it is causing an anti clockwise rotation and because of the upward force that will cause a clockwise rotation and if whenever we are solving a question what we assume we assume that the object is in equilibrium or object is balanced So when object is in equilibrium, because to solve these questions, we have to assume that object is in equilibrium. So we can say the clockwise moment or we can say the anti-clockwise moment is equals to the clockwise moment. So weight of athlete is causing a clockwise moment, uh, sorry, anti-clockwise load is causing an anti-clockwise moment and the upward force of the arm is causing a clockwise moment. So how to solve this question? We will calculate the moment. The, anti, the total anti-clockwise moment is equal to total clockwise moment. Now, what is the moment caused by the weight of this athlete? The weight of the athlete is 70, 700. The mass is 70 and the weight is 700. So weight is equals to 700 multiplied by distance from the pivot. So what is the distance between the weight and the pivot? The perpendicular distance between the weight of the athlete and the pivot, the point of rotation, the perpendicular distance. So it's given 0.9. So it will be 700 into 0 0.9. So 700 into 0 0.9. Same way, the load is also causing an anti-clockwise moment. So plus, because the load is causing a moment in the same direction and when moments are in the same direction, we add them. So it will be 60. The load is equals to 60 multiplied the distance from the pivot. So what is the distance between the perpendicular distance between the load and the pivot? So 0 0.3 plus 0 0.9. So that's equal to 1.2. So 60 multiplied by 1.2 equal to the clockwise moment. So this force is causing a clockwise moment. So force is F multiplied by perpendicular distance from the pivot. So this perpendicular distance from the pivot, that's equal to 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.9. So the total sum will be equal to 1.3. Is it clear till this point? The anti-clockwise, the total anti-clockwise moment is equals to total clockwise moment. So the weight of athlete is acting downward. The weight of the athlete is acting downward. Load is acting downward where arms are applying an upward force that dimension in the cushion. So this is causing an anti-clockwise moment. This is causing an anti-clockwise moment and the upward force is causing a clockwise moment. And this is a pivot, the point around which the object is rotating. So we call that as a pivot. So whenever we are solving a question related to moment, we always consider that object is in equilibrium. When object is in equilibrium or balance, we say the anti-clockwise moment is equals to the clockwise moment. So anti-clockwise moment, what is the anti-clockwise moment? The weight of the athlete is 700 Newton. 
the weight of the load mass is 6 kg but the weight will be 60 newton so how to calculate a moment due to the weight so the moment is calculated by force into distance so what is the moment or turning effect caused by the weight of the athlete that is seven and it is anti clockwise so that is 700 that is the force multiplied by distance between the force and the pivot the perpendicular distance so what is this perpendicular distance that's already given in the question 0 0.9 so 700 is the force and the distance between the pivot and the force is 0 0.9 so 700 into 0 0.9 from where I got these values, Abdullah, as you can see, they mentioned the mass of athlete is 70 kilogram. So if the mass is 70, what will be the weight? Because weight is the force. So weight is mass multiplied by gravity. So 70 multiplied by 10, we will get 700. And the mass of the load is 6 kilogram. So this object is 6 kg. But the weight is the force, so weight is mass multiplied by gravity. Mass is 6 and the gravity is 10, so that is equals to 60 Newton. Because we need the force, we don't need the mass, we need the force and weight is a force. So 700 Newton is the weight of the athlete multiplied by perpendicular distance from the pivot, that's 0 0.9. Plus... Uh, there is also another anti-clockwise moment that is caused by the load. So the force is 60 because the weight of a load is 60 multiplied by perpendicular distance from the pivot. So what is the distance between the pivot and the load? 0 0.9 plus 0 0.3. That's equal to 1.2. So it will be 60 multiplied by 1.2. So these are causing an anti-clockwise moment and then the force, the upward force of the arm is causing a clockwise moment. So what is the clockwise moment? The force of the arm, which we don't know, we say F multiplied by distance from the pivot. So what is the distance from the pivot? That's 0 0.9 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.1. So the total distance will be equal to 1.3. Is it clear till now, this equation? Then we will solve 700 multiplied by 0 0.9 that's equal to 630 so this is 630 plus 60 multiplied by 1.2 equal to 72 and F multiplied by 1.3 then 630 plus 72 that is equal to 702 is equals to uh, f into 1.3 1.3 is multiplied other side it will divide so 702 divided by 1.3 so 702 divided by 1.3 we will get 540 we are calculating the force here the upward force of the arm we are not calculating the weight but we have to calculate a weight first because without the weight we cannot get the upward force so the total upward force exerted by the two arms that is equals to 540 newton so i'll quickly repeat look what happened they, they give you the mass of the athlete the mass of the athlete is 70 kg the mass of the load is 6 kg but mass is not the force weight is the force so weight of the athlete will act downward and weight of the load will also act downward and weight of the load will be 60 newton and weight of the athlete will be 700 newton and around the about the pivot which direction they will try to cause a rotation both will try to cause an anti clockwise rotation but as athlete is doing a press up, so he is applying an upward force by using his arms. 
he is applying an upward force and his upward force which direction this will cause a rotation it will cause a clockwise rotation so basically we are finding this force exerted by the athlete the arms of athlete so the clockwise moment is equals to anti clockwise moment and so it will be f into the total distance we always take the distance from the pivot so this total distance is a distance of force this one is the distance of load and this one is a distance of the weight of athlete that's why the final answer is 540 is it clear now 700 into 0 0.9 plus 16 to 1. Okay, another question. A uniform rod has a weight of 2 Newton. So, when they use the term uniform, it means there will be a weight at the center. So, they did not draw that weight. You have to draw that weight. So, a uniform rod is there which is having a weight of 2 Newton. The total length of the rod is 80 centimeter. So if the length of the rod is 80 centimeter, where the weight will act? So weight will act at the center. And what will be the weight? They mentioned that is equal to 2 Newton. So Weight will act at a 40 centimeter mark. That's right, because half of 80 will be 40. So exactly at 40 centimeter, there will be a weight. A rod is suspended by a thread. So we attach a thread here. So a rod is suspended by a thread at 20 centimeter from end X and a weight of 5 Newton is suspended. So we attach a weight of 5 Newton. A student hang a 6 Newton weight so that it is in equilibrium. What is the distance of 6 Newton weight from end X? So first thing, because the weight is acting at the center. So from both sides, it is 40 centimeters. So this is 40 centimeter. This one will also be 40 centimeter. Now, what should be this distance? This should be 20 centimeter because total is 40. So one side is 20. The other side should also be 20. So if I draw this rod again, just to explain the idea. So we have rod X and Y. And we attach a thread here. Here we have 5 Newton. And here we have two Newtons. This is 20 centimeter mark. This is also a 20 centimeter mark. So basically this is a pivot around which the object can rotate. Which direction this two Newton will cause a rotation? Clockwise or anti-clockwise? Which direction this 2 Newton is causing a rotation? It is in the same as the direction in which the hands of a clock rotate. So that is clockwise. Because it is in this manner, same as the direction in which the rotation of the clock hands. And which direction the 5 Newton will cause a rotation?
so it will cause an anti clockwise rotation but what they mention here in the question that a student yeah the thread is holding the the thread is holding the this rod and around this the object can rotate so because of its weight it can rotate clockwise because of the 5 newton it can rotate anti clockwise but it will not be balanced why it will not be balanced here because the moment caused by the 2 newton force will be smaller as compared to moment caused by 5 newton force because they are at the same distance so what a student hang a student hangs a 6 newton weight so that it will be in equilibrium it will balance so which direct where i should attach a 6 newton weight on the right hand side of the thread or the left hand side to balance it because the, right now the clockwise moment is smaller that's 2 multiplied by 20 which is 40 an anti clockwise moment is 5 multiplied by 20 that's equal to 10 so where i should attach a 6 newton load on the right hand side or on the left hand side so i should attach on the right hand side so i should attach on the right hand side so we should attach a 6 newton load on the right hand side and from a distance from the x distance from the pivot or the thread is x so basically what are the forces here the weight of the thread is uh, the weight of the beam is acting downward which is 2 newton so we also attach another load of 6 newton and the distance between the pivot the thread the pivot and the load is x x means we don't know so when we attach a 6 newton load it will be balanced or it will be equilibrium so it means the anti clockwise moment balances with the clockwise moment so whenever whenever it is in equilibrium the anti clockwise moment <coughs> balances with a clockwise moment now the anti clockwise moment what is the anti clockwise moment that force is 5 multiplied by distance from the pivot because this thread around this thread this rod can rotate so what is the distance from this pivot that is 20 so f multiplied by 20 equal to the clockwise moment so what is the clockwise moment the clockwise moment is due to two forces one is 6 newton another one is 2 newton so 6 newton is causing a clockwise rotation and the distance from the pivot is x x means unknown plus a force of 2 newton the formula for moment moment is force multiplied by distance and when object is in equilibrium the total clockwise moment is equal to total anti clockwise so force is 6 and the distance between the pivot and the force is x unknown so we write x then there is also another clockwise moment because of force of 2 newton and what is the distance between 2 newton what is the distance between 2 newton force and the thread that is equals to 20 centimeter so 2 multiplied by 20 so 5 multiplied by 20 that's equal to 100 6x 2 multiplied by 20 that's equal to 40 100, 40 is added here other side it will be subtracted so 100 minus 40 is equals to 6x 100 minus 40 is equals to 60 so 60 is equals to 6x 6 is multiplied other side it will divide so 60 divided by 6 is equals to x so value of x is equals to 10 centimeter 
but if you read the question what they ask they ask what is the distance between 6 newton and end x so this value of the x this distance is coming out 10 centimeter but what distance they are asking they are asking a distance between the end x and 6 newton so what is the distance between the end x and 6 newton so 20 plus 10 so that is equal to 30 so d will be the right answer is it clear this question So whenever you're solving a question related to turning effect or a moment, first thing what you have to do, you have to sh show the direction of the forces and always keep in mind the weight of the object is there. If it's a uniform object, it will act at the center. So they don't show normally, they do not represent the weight. So you have to draw the weight first because some student without drawing a weight, if they try to solve this question, they will get the wrong answer. Okay, another question. A wooden plank rests in equilibrium on two rocks. Three forces are acting. How are the size of the forces? When it is in equilibrium, equilibrium means it is balanced. When it is balanced, there are two conditions, uh, no resultant moment. Or we can say, if we say that according to first condition, no resultant moment. So we can say the anti-clockwise moment is equals to clockwise. And the second condition, there is no resultant force. So if no resultant force, we can say the upward forces equal to the downward forces. So what are the upward forces? P and R are acting up and Q is acting down. So it will be P plus R are the upward force that is equal to downward force equal to Q. So what will be the right answer? B will be the right answer. Is it clear? Discussion? To everyone, anyone having a doubt or if you want me to repeat any question, you can just let me know so I will repeat. Uh, this question I want everyone to solve. Look, they mention a uniform plank. I will uh, give you a hint, but I want everyone to participate and try to solve. A uniform plank rests on a pivot so at the center so weight weight of a plank is acting downward but that will not cause any rotation why it will not cause any rotation because it is acting on the pivot it does not have any distance that's why the weight of the plank does not cause any rotation so mass of the child p is 25 so this is child P, he's having a mass of 25 kg. So if his mass is 25, what about the weight of this child? Weight will be equal to 250 Newton. And the weight of a child Q, we don't know that we want to find. So that is the weight of child Q, we say W. Which direction the weight of the child P will cause a rotation, clockwise or anti-clockwise? You have the formula weight is equals to mass multiplied by gravity. Mass of an object is 25 and the gravity is 10. So when 25 multiplied by 10, weight is equals to 250. Newton because weight is a force mass is not the force So weight of the child P is 250 
and it is at a distance of 1.2 it is causing an anti clockwise moment weight of child q is acting downward as well and it will cause a clockwise rotation as they mentioned the plank is balanced it is in equilibrium so when something is balanced we can say the anti clockwise moment is equals to the clockwise moment the anti clockwise moment is 250 multiplied by distance from the pivot that's equal to 1.2 clockwise moment that is the weight of child q multiplied by distance that is 1.5 why we did not take the weight of the plank because it is acting at the center so it does not cause any rotation or turning effect so when we find it will be 250 multiplied by 1.2 divided by 1.5 so what will be the weight of child q so weight of the child q that is equals to 200 newton but in the question they are not asking for weight what they are asking they are asking for mass of child q how to get the mass so you have the formula weight is mass into gravity so weight is 200 mass is unknown and gravity is 10 so 10 is multiplied other side it will divide so that is equals to 200 divided by 10 which is equals to 20 kg so the correct answer will be a is it clear this question then there is also a very short method if you recall the concept if you recall the concept of the heavy and the lighter uh, yesterday we discussed heavy objects are placed closer to the pivot and lighter objects are placed away from the pivot so it means because the child q is lighter than child p that's why the child q is away from the pivot it's it's having a less weight or less mass and child p is having more weight or mass so if mass of the child p is 25 so it means mass of child q should be less than 25 so it if should be less than 25 which option is less than 25 it cannot be d it cannot be c it cannot be b so it will be a so you can use your understanding the concept of the topic to answer this question without calculation or if you find calculation easy you can use the calculation and work out the final answer is it clear this question in mcqs in multiple choice question they don't ask for the working they normally want you because there is a separate answer sheet so they want answer from you how you work out how you got the answer that is not they check for is paper 2 the mcqs for structured question yes there are uh, the writing a formula is having a mark getting the showing calculation and getting the answers having marks but in paper 2 it does not depend how you approach the question what is important is the final answer so even if you are getting the final answer by calculation by your understanding or from your neighbor that does not make difference to the marking okay in this question <clears throat> the diagram shows a wooden beam which is having a negligible weight so the beam is having a weight but that is negligible when they say negligible it means it is very small or you can neglect you don't consider so no need to consider it's very small and it is attached to a wall by a hinge 
so this is a hinge the point where this beam is attached kept horizontal by a vertical rope so this is a rope which is keeping it horizontal the weight of the person is acting downward the length of the beam is 3 meter a man of weight 800 newton walk along the beam from p to q what is the distance of the man from p when the tension in the rope become 500 so if the tension in the rope tension is when we apply force by using a rope we call that as a tension so tension in a rope is 500 newton weight of the band is 800 newton so with that if this is a p is a point of rotation or a pivot with direction the weight of the man will cause a rotation what is the direction of rotation for weight of the man so that is clockwise and with direction the spring will cause a rotation that will cause anti-clockwise and because the beam is balanced so if it is balanced the anti-clockwise moment is equals to clockwise so anti-clockwise moment that is 500 multiplied by distance as they mentioned the length of a beam is 3 meter so if this total length is 3 meter so what is the distance between the pivot and the load the string that is equal to 3 multiplied by clockwise equal to clockwise moment the weight of the man is 800 and the distance between the man and the pivot is unknown so that is x so that is unknown or x so 500 multiplied by 3 that's equal to 1500 equal to 800 x 800 is multiplied other side it will divide so 1500 divided by 800 that's equal to 1.875 which is approximately equal to 1.9 so c will be the right answer is it clear this question so whenever we are solving the question related to equilibrium yeah length of the beam is 3 meter so if the length of the beam is 3 meter abdullah you can see this total length is 3 meter so and the rope is applying a force of 500 so what is the distance between the rope the 500 newton force and the pivot that's 3 meter and the man is walking and he is not at point q they mention a man walk along from p to q what is the distance from p when the tension is q 500 not length of the rope we did not consider length of the rope we, the length of the beam this is the length of the beam the length of the beam is 300 uh, 3 meters and the force is 500 newton we don't have to consider length of the rope we have to check the perpendicular distance from the pivot to the force that is equals to length of the beam and the weight is acting downward and the distance is unknown x so we calculated that the man is actually 1.9 meter away from this position 